Hey there everyone and welcome to day three of designing our tourism website. I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day to go through this video series and go through this video. And if you've landed on this video first and haven't watched the other two videos, my suggestion is to click on the playlist that's going to pop up in this corner or I'll leave a link in the description below to the playlist and then start from day one and then day two and so on. If you want to build this website with me and follow along, there are a few things you're going to need like web hosting, a domain name and the Divi page builder. I have left links so you can get web hosting and a domain name as well as a link to Elegant Themes where you can get Divi. And just to be transparent and upfront with you, if you do purchase the web hosting, the domain name, or Divi through my links, I will receive a commission. And if you do do that, from the bottom of my heart, I do thank you. It helps support my channel and myself. So in the last video, we built this hero section, as well as this social proof section. So in this video, I'm thinking that we finish off this home page with this deal section and this features section. So let's start with that. So I'm just going to scroll up to our deal section here. So the first thing we need to do is just put in this heading which says check out our great deals. But we also need to put in this background color that I have which is a very light pinkish color. So let's go back to our Divi Builder. Let's scroll down here. So after the social proof section, I'm just going to click on this blue button to add a new section and I'm going to choose regular section. So I'm not going to insert my rows yet. I'm going to close that. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to hover over the section and click on section settings. We're then going to click on the background option and I'm going to change the background color, which is this first option here, which is the default and just change it to my very light pink color. And I'm going to save that. And the next thing we can do, we can scroll up here and we can actually copy this row with the testimonials heading in it. And then just change out the text as this already has all our stylings on it. So we don't have to restyle a brand new text module. So let's duplicate our row by clicking the duplicate row button. And then let's drag our row to our new section. And then let's click on the edit module settings button. And I just want to check what the wording is. Check out our great deals. So I'm going to just change this to that wording. Now that that's done, I'm just going to save that and let's see what we need to do next. So we need to make these cards. The first thing we want to do is we want to put in a row with three columns. So let's go do that. Let's just hover over our heading here and let's push the green button to add a new row. And let's then choose the three column option. Let's go see what else we need to do. All right, so the first thing we need is an image and then we need a text module. So let's add an image and then a text module. So in the search bar, yeah, I'm just going to type in image and I'm going to choose the image option. Then I'm going to click on the image here. And I'm just going to drag in the images from my other screen. So I've dragged all three images in and just a reminder, if you want to use these exact images I'm using, I will leave a link in the description where you can download the images. So my first image is already chosen, which is the image of the Kruger National Park. So I'm going to click this button that says upload an image. And there is my image there. Now what I'm going to do to the image, I'm going to just click on the design tab. I want to go to the sizing option. And where it says forceful width, I want to change this to yes. 
And I think that's all we need to do on the image. So let's save the image. Then we need to add a text module. So let's hover over the image. Let's push the gray add new module button and let's search for text. Let's select the text option. So what we need to do, we need to put in this heading with some placeholder texture. You'll obviously use your proper text. I've just used placeholder texture as this is just an example website. So I'm just going to copy this text from my design and then paste it over. So I'm going to quickly grab the heading. And I'm going to go back to the visual builder and I'm just going to delete this placeholder text and place my heading in there. And then for this, I think I'm going to make this a heading four. Then I'm just going to copy my other text here. And I'm going to come back to the visual builder. I'm just going to make a new line. I'm not going to use a new text module. I'm just using the same text module. But what I'll do is I'll leave this text here as just paragraph text. So let's just see what else we have to do here. Okay, we need to add this and this we're going to need a little bit of code, but I'll show you where to get the code and where to paste the code. So I think first what I'm going to do, let me just style the text and then we'll move on to doing the section over here. So I'm just going to go back to the visual builder. First thing I want to do, let's hover over the heading and click on this edit button. For the heading for font, I'm going to leave as default. The heading for font weight. I'm going to try, make this semi bold for the heading for font style. I'm going to leave as is for the heading for text alignment. Just want to have a look here. Okay, we're keeping all the text on the left. Then for the heading for text color, now it's this blue color, but I think here it's black. So we're going to change this to black. So I'm going to choose my black color for the heading for text size. I'm going to leave it as 18 pixels. The letter spacing, line height. So the line height, I might try 1.3M. That does look better. And then everything else, I'm not going to change. So that's all I'm going to do for the heading. Let's now click on the edit button for the paragraph text. For text font, I'm going to leave default. The text font weight, I'm going to leave as regular. Text font style, I'm not changing anything. The text color. I'm going to leave as is, which is set in the customizer, which is a dark gray color. Then the text size here, I'm going to leave it as default, which is 14 pixels. Everything else I'm going to leave as is. I'm not changing anything there. So let's see how we build the rest of the card out. So we need these two parts and with these icons. And what I'm going to use for this is called blurb modules in Divi. So let's go back to the visual builder. Let's save our text. So let's come and hover over the texture and add a new module. And we want to search for blurb. So if I'm not saying it properly, that's how you spell it. And I'm going to choose a blurb module. So for the title, I'm going to put in this heading here, which says duration. And for the body, I'm going to put in the seven nights. So let's come to title and I'm going to type in duration. And then for the body, I'm going to type in seven nights. Just like that. So let's go to the image and icon. And we're not going to use the image. So we're going to under use icon changes to yes. And the icon I need is a calendar. So all we need to do is use a search bar and search for calendar. So it's this calendar over here. I'm going to select that. It's a bit big and awkward at the moment, but we're going to fix all that. The link and background and admin label, we don't need to do anything there. So let's go to the design tab. Let's hover over the calendar and let's click on the edit button. So I want to change the color to the blue color. The image background or icon background, I don't want a background, so I'm going to leave it that as is. For the image and icon placement, I want to change this to the left. So it'll move it to the left. 
for the image icon width, I do want to change this and I want to change this to 28 pixels. We're not going to change anything under the rounded corners. We're not going to have any border styles. And yeah, the rest, we're not going to change anything over there. Let's not click on the heading here on that edit button. And I just want to see if I need to change anything there. So this needs to be black. I think the color, yes, it does. So the font looks a bit thick as well. So let's change it to semi bold. Let's choose the black color. And then the text title text size, I actually want to change this to 14 pixels. Then let's click on the paragraph edit button. And I'm not going to change anything. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it's on 14 pixels and it is. So I think that looks good for that. So one thing we do need to do now is we need to make the width 50% because you'll see here, we want this to be 50% and the other blurb to be 50% so that they fit alongside one another. So let's go back to the visual builder. And I'm just going to save this quickly. I just want to show you this here is our column. This whole thing here is our column. You'll see if I just hover there, there's this gray line going down here. So all that there is our column. Now, if I hover over this module, you'll see this entire blurb takes up 100% of the column. So that's why we need to change it to 50%. Otherwise, the blurb that we put alongside it will drop down to the next line and we want it alongside one another. So I hope I'm making sense there. So let's go back into the settings. Let's go to design and let's click the sizing option. And under the width, so not content width, but the actual width, let's put in there 50%. And then let's save it and let's hover over there again. And now you'll see it doesn't take up 100% of our column. It's only 50% of our column. So let's duplicate this module for the next one. And let's just go back to our design. And over here, we need a bunch of people and the heading will be group size and it will be 10 people. So let's go back to the visual builder. Let's edit this. And the reason it's not falling alongside this module is because we need to still add some code, but let's just get the styling done. So let's click on the settings. Let's change the title to group size. Let's change this to 10 people. And then let's click on the image and icon. And in the search bar, Let's type people and it's this one over here with the three. Okay, great. So that's all done. Let's save that. And you'll see now if I hover over this one, it is also 50%. To add our code, we need to actually go into the row settings. So let's click on the row settings. And we need to put the code in each column. So let's go to the first column and click on the settings. Let's click on advanced and let's click on this option that says custom CSS. Then you're going to click the link in the bottom for the code and it's going to bring you to this code pen and you're going to copy this code over here. So it says you display flex, flex wrap, wrap, align items, baseline. So just copy that and come back to the visual builder. And in this main element, you're going to paste the code in there. And you'll see it now brings the other blurb alongside this first blurb. So while we are in the row section here, let's click the back button. Let's go to the second column to the advanced tab to custom CSS. And let's paste that code into the main element of the second column. And let's do the same with the third column. Go to advanced custom CSS and under main element, just paste in that code. And then we can save that. So that's what it looks like. So let's see what else we need to put on this card. 
So we need a text module with the price. Let's go back to our visual builder and let us add another module. So we actually want to add it under the second blurb here. Let's click the add button and let's type in text. Let's put in text. And then we can delete this placeholder content. And we can just put in our price. And let's just hover over the price here and click on the edit button. Text font, I'm going to leave as default. Text font weight, this is bold, so let's change ours to a bold. Then text font style, I'm going to leave as is. The text color, it's the gray, the dark gray color, and I wanted the black color. I'm going to change that to black. Then for text size, so I'm going to do two options here. For desktop, I'm going to make this 24 pixels. And then I'm going to click on the mobile icon. And for tablet, I'm going to leave it 24 pixels. But for phone, I just want to make this 20 pixels. Let's just go back to desktop. And the next thing we need to add is this button with the text book now. So let's go back there. Let's just save this text for now. Sorry. So let's just do one more thing on this price text. I just you know, want to make this 50% as well. So let's go to design. Let's go to sizing. And under the width here, let's put in 50%. And then let's save that. Let's add our button now. So we want to hover over the price now and add a new module. And let's search for button. And let's choose button. So the button text must say book now. And then for the link, I'm just going to put a hash there. You would obviously put a link to something like booking.com or if you make another page on your website where they can do bookings or need to fill in a form, you can direct them to that page. But I'm not going to create any pages or I'm not going to link to booking.com. But that's what you would do in your case. And let's go to design. For alignments, I'm going to leave as is. Text, I'm not going to change, but I'm going to click on button. And to I want to use custom styles for the button, so I'm going to change this to yes. So for button text size, I'm going to leave this as 20 on desktop and tablet, but I'm going to still change it on the phone. So I'm just going to click on the mobile icon. I'm going to come to phone. And then for phone, I want to change this to 16 pixels. Let's go back to desktop. But for the button text color, we want it white. So I'm just going to actually put in proper white here. I don't want it the pinkish white. Save that. And for the button background color, we want this blue. And then I see if, if we hover over it, it's just got a a lighter blue, but that's just to do with the opacity. What I'm going to do is hover over button background, click on the cursor, change it to the hover state, and then just click on this color. I'm just going to bring this very right hand slide, I'm going to bring it down to about 80%. Right, and I'm just going to change it back to the normal mode. And then button border width, I don't want a width, so I'm going to make that at zero pixels. Button border color, we don't have a border, so no need to change anything there. The button border radius, I'm leaving. Button letter spacing, I'm not going to change. The font, I'm not going to change. The font weights, I'm not going to change. But the button font style, I'm going to make this all uppercase. And then the show this button icon, which is that you know, it's messing it up a little bit, so I'm going to say no. And I think it's just because there's not enough space there for the button icon to show. So if you want a button icon, just make your text much smaller. And I'm not going to do anything with spacing or these other options. Yet. So that's that part done. So we can save that. So let's now put the border and shadow on the column. So I'm going to click on the row settings. I'm going to go to the first column. 
I'm going to go to the design tab and I'm going to come to border and then for under border styles we're going to leave it for all four borders selected for border width I'm going to change this to 8 pixels that will give us the black but we don't want black I want it white so I'm going to click on the color and just type in the hex code for white and then I'm going to come down to box shadow and we're going to choose the second option again and then the box shadow horizontal position, I'm going to leave as zero. The box shadow vertical position, I'm going to change to zero. The box shadow blur strength, I'm going to change to 20 pixels. Box shadow spread strength, I'm going to leave on zero pixels. And I'm just going to come to the shadow color and just soften it a bit. So instead of 0.3, I'm going to make it 0.2. And what we can do, let's extend the board and box shadows to these other two columns. So as we did in the last video, let's right click on box shadow. Let's choose this option to extend box shadow. Let's choose to all columns and throughout this row. Let's click the extend button. Right, we don't have content in there. That's why it's like that, but we will change that. Then let's go to the border. Let's right click on border styles. Let's choose the option to extend border styles. We want to do it to all columns and throughout this row and click the extend button and it puts the borders in. Last thing we want to do is just click on this back button. You can't see it now because this bar is hiding it, but there's a back button there. If we click on it, it'll take us to our row settings. All we want to do is click on design, click on sizing and equalize column heights. We want to change this to yes. Now that's just in case something something that you fill in has more text then at least the columns will remain the same height throughout so that one won't be shorter than the other as a as a, I showed you in the last video same same concept so let's save that and then let's save our page And let's go to the front end of our website. I'm going to just do a hard refresh. And let's scroll down. And there's our card over there. So sorry, I've just noticed now. I think I want to put some padding over here because you'll see this is right against this white border and it doesn't look too good. So let's go back to the visual builder. So Normally we would go into the row settings and into each column, go to the design tab and on the spacing do the padding and then we'd just do the padding for the whole column. The problem is I want the image to have no padding. I want the image to be right against this border as it is now. So to keep it like that, we actually need to change the padding on the text module on these blurb modules this text module and this button module so let's first go to the text module let's go to the design tab and let's click on the spacing option so for padding we want to go left and right because top and bottom is fine so we just want to choose the left and right let's click on the chain link and i'm going to make this eight pixels so it gives us some spacing there. So that looks better. Let's save that. Let's come into the first blurb module here. Let's click that settings. Let's click on the design tab. Let's come to the spacing option. And yeah, we just want to affect the left hand side. So on the left, just for left, we're not going to click this chain link anymore because we don't want the left and right to be the same. We just want to affect the left. Let's put eight pixels in there and that will just move eight pixels from the left. So let's save that. Let's now click on this other blurb module. Let's go to the design tab. Let's go to spacing. And now we want to affect the right hand side. So let's Go to right and let's choose eight pixels there. Nothing will really happen there because there's already enough space there. So, but we'll just do that. So it's 
uniform. Then let's come to this text and let's click on the settings. Let's click on the design tab. Let's click on spacing. And again, we only want to affect the left hand side. So we're just going to choose left and we're going to put in eight pixels there. So the only thing now, we can't really do anything with this button. So a way to move this button away from the edger is to actually make these cards a bit wider. So to do that, we go into the row settings. We click on the design tab, choose the sizing option. And where it says use custom gutter width, we're gonna change this to yes. And we're just gonna change this down to two. And you'll see then that there's some spacing for the button. Now the only thing is we need to put spacing at the bottom of the card. There's no spacing there. So to do that, we need to now go into each column, go to the design tab, go to spacing, and we just want to affect the bottom of the column. So let's put in eight pixels there and you'll see that moves it down. So we can right click on padding and we can say extend the padding to all the columns in this row and let's click extend and it will put eight pixels padding at the bottom of each column. So let's click save and then save again. And then let's save our page. And let's go back to the front end and refresh. Okay, and that looks better with the padding now. So now, as you, if we come back to our builder, let's just go to tablet. And this is what Divi is showing us as the tablet, but Divi doesn't always show us exactly what's happening. So we actually need to look on the front end and I'm going to show you how to do that now. If we go to phone, you'll see it looks like everything's squashed together. Let's go to the front end of our website. What I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on the screen and I'm going to choose this option here that says inspect. And over here, I can toggle between different screen sizes. So I'm going to click this toggle. And let's just change it to a tablet view. Let's go for iPad. So this is what it will look like on our iPad. It's fine. So there's just some glitch with Divi here, and I'm not sure why, but it is. So just check this on the front end as well and use that inspect element. And then just, you can go choose this toggle device, then you can choose an iPad for the tablet, and then let's just choose an iPhone 10, and let's have a look at it. And you'll see it's fine. The spacing's fine there, and everything else is fine. So that is all fine. So that is the one card done. So let's go back to the front end. Let's just change this back to desktop. To make things easier, instead of having to add a new image, add new text and redo these blurb modules, this text and this button. Let's show you a quicker way. Let's go into the row settings and let's delete these two columns over here. Not the first because the first one has all our content in, but let's delete the two that don't have our content in. So it's the middle one and then the bottom one. Right, now we just have our one column. Now all we're going to do is duplicate the column twice. And there's all our content done and our styling. All we need to do is now change out the images, the text, the price, or anything that needs to change it. We just need to change it. So I'm going to quickly do that. And I'm not going to go run through it with you because we've done it over here and you know how to change images and text and all that. So I'm just going to quickly do it and I'll be back with you now. So I've changed my images, I've changed my text, changed the pricing and the amount of people, otherwise everything remains the same. And that is our deal section done. So we can save our page, come to the front end and I'll do a hard refresh. And there's our deal section done. So if we look at it, there it is there on our design.
and there it is on our website. So as the coding wasn't hard, it was just a matter of copying three lines of code. So that was quite easy to do. And the last section we're going to do now on the home page is this feature section. So the first thing we need is the background needs to change to that light blue and we need a heading why choose us. Let's go back to our visual builder. Let's come down here and let us add a new section. So we'll click the blue button to add a new section. I'm going to select regular. And then let's close the insert row option for now. Let's hover over our section here and let's go to the section settings. Let's go to background and let's leave it on the background color and change it to the light blue. Again, you will change it to whatever your brand colors are. Let's save that. And let's come up here to this heading and let's duplicate this row. And then all we're going to do is drag this row into our new section. And we're just going to change the text out. Again, all the styling is done from the previous one, so we don't have to change any stylings or do new stylings. We just have to change out this text. And then we can click Save. And let's see what else we need to do. So we have three columns here. And then these are also the blurb modules. And these are icons in the blurb modules that we're going to use. So let's go back to the visual builder. Let's add a new row with three columns. Let's click the green add new row. Let's choose the three equal columns. And for the module, we're going to use a blurb. Let's select blurb. So for the title, the first one says flexible payments options. And let's go back there. And then, yeah, I've just got some lorem ipsum text. You will obviously put proper wording in there. So I'm just going to copy this from my design. And then I'm going to go back to the visual builder and under the body, yeah, I'm going to remove this placeholder content and just paste in the lorem ipsum text. Then we're going to come down here to image and icon. We're not going to use an image. We're using an icon. So we're going to select yes. And this icon is a credit card. So in the search bar, I'm going to type in credit card. And I think it's this one that I used. Right, and in the link of the background, I'm not going to do anything there. So let's hover over the icon. Let's click the edit button. Let's change this to blue. There is no background color, so we're going to leave that. The Im image icon placement, we want to leave it on the top. Then the image icon width, I want to make this 60 pixels. Then let's hover over the heading. Let's click on the settings. So it's black and it is bold. So let's go have a look at So we're going to leave the title font as default. Title font weight, we're going to make it, I'm going to choose semi-bold. Then the title font style I'm going to leave as is. Title text alignment, I want it in the center. Title text color, I want it the black color. So title text size, I'm going to leave at 18 pixels. Title letter spacing, title line height. Title text shadow, I'm going to leave everything there as is and let's hover over the body text and let's click the edit button body font we're going to leave as default font weight is going to stay as regular font style is going to stay as is the body text alignment we just want to center that and then the color i'm going to leave the dark gray the body text size i'm leaving as 14 pixels and everything else remains as is so there we go let's just have a look at it on the tablet and let's also have a, so it looks fine on the tablet. Let's have a look on the phone. And it looks fine on the phone as well. So let's go back to desktop. And then all I'm going to do is duplicate this blurb twice. Sorry, we first have to save that. And let's go and hover over the blurb and duplicate it twice. And then I'm just going to drag it into the other columns. 
And now all we have to do is change the icons and the heading text. So the next one, so it's a speech bubble with a dollar sign and it says best price guaranteed. So let's go to the second blurb. Let's click on the settings. So the title was best price guaranteed. The body text I'm going to leave as the Lauren Epson image and icon in the search bar. I'm just going to say maybe chat. Oh, there we go. And there's the icon we used and then I can save that. And then for the last blurb, so it's just a license to an operator as a heading and this document as the icon. Let's go back to the visual builder. Let's hover over the last blurb. Let's click on settings. For the heading, I'm going to put in license to an operator. For the body, again, I'm leaving the Lauren Ipsum text. For image and icon, I'm probably going to search her for legal document look like a legal document it looks like it's this one yeah yeah it is and we can save that and then we can save our page and then let's just go back to tablet so that's what it'll look like on tablet which looks good let's click on the phone and that's what it'll look like on the phone which looks good. And let's go to the front end of our website. I'm going to do a hard refresh. And there is our feature section done. So there is our home page done. We've got we've done our header. We've done our header. We've done our hero section, our social proof section, our deal section, our feature section and our footer. And there's the entire front page built out. It's responsive on all screen sizes, so you won't have issues there. And all we're gonna do now is build out this destinations page, the about us page and contact us page. So I might make three more videos, one for the destinations page, one for the about us page, and one for the contact us page. And then we are done building this site. So, the next video I will hopefully release tomorrow or the next day, just depending on the on time I have, because I've got another project coming up, but I'm trying to do the videos every day or at least release it every second day. Then before I go, just a reminder that if you want me to design a website in another industry, maybe an industry you in and what need a website for it, please comment in the comment section what industry you want me to build it in, then I will design it and then we'll build it together. Then maybe there's a website you've seen that you like the look of and you, you want to see if you can build it in Divi, drop the link in the comments or send me an email. My email address is in the description. Then last thing guys, if you are enjoying the series and you're enjoying my videos, please leave a like on this. It'll help me get more viewers on my video. And then please consider subscribing to my channel that also helps with the YouTube algorithm. And for now, that's it. And I will chat to you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Cheers.